Today we're going to talk to Doug in 4H&H, and we're going to go through several of the menus in the FTDX10. This is going to be a very in-depth review of how to set up the receiver on the brand, pretty much brand new, Yezu FTDX10, which for all intents and purposes is a miniature competition HF radio. And it's got some really cool features to it, so stick around. <laughs> Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. On this channel, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. And the FTDX10 is pretty darn new. It's the newest radio from Yezu at this point in time. And Doug was on one of my small channel, let's introduce some small channel episodes that I did a while back. And he's, uh, he's actually an employee of Motorola. And he's been a ham for... A Two or three decades, I forget. It, long, longer than I've been a ham. He's been he's been tinkering with radios since he was he was real young, and he's got some experience with some of the older models, and he knows how to work his receiver. So I asked him to come on today, and we're going to go through an in depth review. This is going to be a long video, so pause it, come back to it, do what you want to, uh, watch it a few times, whatever. If you're interested in the FTDX10, this is going to be an in depth review about how to set up your receiver for both single sideband and CW. Now, these steps can be duplicated for RIDI and digital and AM and other modes and even FM in the menus we're going to show. So don't worry about that. You're going to have plenty of opportunity to go in there and tinker around, but this is going to be a cool thing to show you coming up. Let me show you two things really fast, which I think is important to the kind of the step one, kind of what to do first. Okay, so you've got right here and the picture is dark because the screen is so bright there may be a way to go in there and adjust the screen brightness but this is where we're going to have it today so the first thing i will i will tell you and this is information that doug gave me as, as well this is your attenuator and it goes up from 6 to 12 to 18 db that that's good a lot of attenuators only go to 6 or maybe only go to 12 so the fact that this goes up to 18 db is really good you've got three options for the attenuator there can hear the difference. Turn that up a little bit. Really does cut down the noise. Nope. Okay. Just like that. So we can go in there. And then you can go in here and turn off an IP, what's called, you can turn off the, uh, the amp and go into the IPO settings. And that really quiets the no, noise, the IPO menu, I should say. That really quiets the noise down as well. Now, we're going to talk about IPO with Doug here in just a second. But if you just do those two things and then mess with your RF game, you can clear out a lot of the noise just by doing that. So let's get Doug on. I'm going to bring him into the channel with us. I will put a link to his YouTube channel in the description below. And let's talk about tuning the, FT, the, tuning the receiver on the FTDX10. But I'm wondering, like this, uh, the, the attenuator is pretty standard across all the radios I have. But like this IPO thing and other terms, <laughs> how many of these terms are actually all just like Yezu stuff? And uh, Well, yeah, so absolutely IPO is Yezu speak. Okay. For turning off your RF amplifier. So coming in off the antenna, you'll go through attenuation. And if you have them, you'll go through, well, you go through a bandpass filter. You'll go through possibly a pre-selector if the radio has one. Yeah, and uh, but not a lot of radios have those fancy pre-selectors. This IC seventy six ten has it. The um, let's see, the IC IC seventy six ten, the um, mm -hmm. five thousand FTDX five thousand, the one hundred one at D or MP has it. Um, okay. Now the ten, believe it or not, doesn't. And even without that pre-selector, it still was managed to uh, obtain the third place in Sherwood's list. Hmm. Okay. And that's pretty amazing to me because those selectors are what's helping those radios achieve the DR rating, uh, that's you know, the, the selectivity. Okay. So that's pretty, pretty, I was, I was really wanting to see, and this guy really do it, but it can, I can tell you from using it in okay. the 10 is, is absolutely has earned it position as number three under the flex 700 and the 101 D. 
um, okay. or MP, okay. you know, the 200 watt variant. But right, it's, right. yeah, so, so what Yesu speak is IPO is intercept point optimization. It's fancy mm -hmm. terminology, but it's the intercept point is where it, your first IF comes in and creates a, um, you know, coming in off the antenna, the signal mm -hmm. comes in, meets the first IF, generates your first IF frequency, and there's an amplifier stage there too to boost the signal. And so on the lower bands, especially 40 meters through 160, you just don't really need that sensitivity there. You don't need that amplifier. Okay. Because it drags in a lot more QRN. So mm -hmm. in Yesu speak, it's IPO on means turn RF amplifier off. Now, okay. for example, in other radios, like let's say Kenwood and ICOM, I've got an older ICOM where it's preamp on or not. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so essentially what you're doing with IPO is not turning on your preamp. But it comes standard with, the, or the one, if, at least the 10 comes standard with it on. With IPO I mean, on? Well, uh, well no. with amp on, amp one on. Yeah, amp one should be on, yes. Yeah. That is the yeah. default. The, the radios okay. are aligned at amp one because amp one is going to give the radio what they consider to be the, you know, the standard select, uh, standard sensitivity. Yeah. But, um, so it's your option to turn IPO on, which is, uh, again, means turn the RF amplifier off. So like you yeah. say, like I said, on some of the Kenwoods and ICOMs, it's preamp, sometimes preamp one, preamp two or none. And no preamp on those radios is is similar to Yesu's uh, IPO own. So it's confusing okay. because okay. You, you tell people, oh, it, you know, turn your IPO on to turn off your RF amplifier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It just doesn't, yeah, that's, it doesn't that's, make sense. That's kind of what I was, was what I was getting at. I'm like, okay, so what is it called? So, okay, so we can, we can get into this later, but I'd like to know, because I, I basically know what you're going to show me because we've done this once already. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'd like to know what the kind of the, I'd, I'd like to know how to do the same kind of thing on the 7,300. And then of course the 7,700, yeah, okay. which I'm going to, so, I'm going to guess the 7,700 has probably a better selection of tunable variances. Well, um, I had never had a 7,700 in front of me, so I don't know how it was back then because that was back when it was still a superhead, I believe. It was still a super hit receiver. It was not software defined. So right, uh, yeah, yeah. The seventy seven hundred is not software defined. So my older ICOMs, they just have preamp on or off, preamp one, preamp two, mm -hmm. no preamp. There's no such thing as IPO. But essentially, what they're doing is just not. Well, as a matter of fact, think about it this way: that you you pointed this out, and this is a great way to explain it. A Yesu mm -hmm. is going to wake up with amp one on. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Some of the radios that don't have IPO, other brands, they're going to wake up with no preamp turned on. Okay. Which is essentially the same as if a Yesu was to wake up with IPO enabled. Okay. So it's just marketing. You know, they, they came up with this thing, intercept point optimization. It sounds yeah. so imp impressive, but <laughs> it just simply means that um, we you can turn your preamp off. Well, again, and on the other radios, it's a matter of do you turn on or not. You only need to get 20 meters and higher, higher in frequency. So, okay. and some radios offer preamp too. Well, on 10 meters uh, and, and maybe even some 15, that can come in handy, the preamp too, because you need a little more sensitivity of frequencies. Okay. Now, to answer your question about the 7300, because it's not a super hit, it's like conversion. It doesn't really have necessarily the exact equivalent of a first IF where you're just okay. going to say, turn off the amplifier that's in the first IF, turn off the okay. RF amplifier. And so uh, they call it IP plus. IP plus. That's what they okay. call it in the 7300. Okay. They're doing with IP plus, and I will tell you, it's a very, uh, what's the word to use? It, it, I'm using a 7300. I don't see a whole lot of difference with IP plus like I do with IPO. Okay. <laughs> so, so the IP plus and the 7300 is a special algorithm that mm -hmm. injects white noise into the signal, mm -hmm. but intentionally so, and then they run some magic code that by using that 
that white noise, they're able to then give you a better noise figure, a better noise floor. They're able to knock some of the noise out of the signal. Okay. But it's, uh, whereas with Yesu, it's just simply, well, we're just not going to amplify it. You know, we'll turn on okay. IPO, so we're not going to amplify that noise. With an SDR, with a direct conversion, they, they don't really have an amplifier per se because there's not on the first IF. So they're just okay. going to uh, run that algorithm they call IP plus that does some pro some fancy processing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, not to get too technical, but yes, it's actually, it's funny to think that it's actually injecting noise to uh, knock down noise. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's how, that's the equivalent in, in the, um, in the 7,300. Now I'm not sure what they would call that in a flex. Yeah. We'll have to look at that. Yeah. So, you know, you're absolutely right. Everybody names things a little bit different. Yeah. And it's a lot of it is marketing speak and the IPO thing. I, when it first came out, it just confused me. Oh, you know, and I'm an old radio guy. I'm an old radio technician. Mm -hmm. I know how they work and I'm going, what in the mm -hmm. world is this? And it's, and I find out, Oh, you mean that's just your fancy way of saying you're turning off the RF amplifier. <laughs> and, you know, and, and let me relate this to something real world. Okay. Older radios, you know, back when hams built their own radios and they were using uh -huh. tubes and all that, they were just not nearly as sensitive as the radios we have available to us today. They didn't have the technology, these MOSFET transistors we have and all. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they would not have needed an IPO probably. They would have needed an amp too. Uh, so so okay. what we've reached we've reached a pinnacle in technology where the receivers are so sensitive that on those lower bands, they're really too sensitive. Right. So the answer to that is for those, let's just say for those of us, I know hams who don't even care about using digital noise reduction. They don't care. They don't mind the grind. Yeah. But for those, and I'm, I've, I've been spoiled by the 5,000. I've gotten to the use, so used to being able to do sideband and not hear the grind. Mm -hmm. And so for those who don't want to hear the grind, you, you need these tools to be able to knock that noise floor down. And IPO is one of the very first things I do it with. Now, attenuation works hand in hand with it because sometimes like I've got another ham in my neighborhood, I, I'd have to attenuate him a full 18 dB mm. because oh, I, want, yeah. I want to protect yeah. the front end of my receiver. You know, you can sure. damage the front end of your receiver. Mm -hmm. So attenuation is your first attack there. And then still I run IPO. Mm. So you work those two stages together really just to get I, I, the simple way I explain it to people is work the noise floor down to S zero. Yeah. Whatever combination of attenuation or IPO you need to use because mm -hmm. some radios even have a second level of IPO. The 5,000 has that. So work mm. that noise floor down to zero, but not below zero. In other words, you want to get it right down to where it might just every now and then flicker to S 0.5. Okay. And then anybody that talks after that, you're, you should have no trouble hearing them. So you can't ha be an S meter watcher. You can't be the kind of, oh, how many pounds am I putting on you? You know, you can't yeah. get into being an S meter watcher. I, yeah. And I can tell you this, my friends who do QRP with radios that don't even have an S meter. Yeah. Uh, and, and myself, we've all become accustomed to giving people a signal report based upon how they sound. Right. Not what the meter says. And there's actual legitimacy to that. And here's why. The original idea of an S unit was 6 dB mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it takes 6 dB for your ear to notice a change in volume. Mm -hmm. So the idea was it, it would, we would move the S, we, we would say that one S unit of increase meant that your ear could notice the change in how good somebody sounded, how loud they were. Mm -hmm. And so now the radios, everybody knows the S meters are not all the same. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, you know, I, I learned by listening and I've never really paid much attention because it never made sense to me to give someone a, a five, nine, if you've got like a five, seven noise floor. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, uh, and I'm like, well, yeah, you're five, nine, but you're really only putting two DB on me. So are you five? Nine? I mean, you know, so yeah, I've always done it that way myself, just by listening. If they're booming, then I give them a five, nine. If they're a little bit beneath the stations that are booming, then they're five, seven or five, eight. And I've always just kind of done it by ear. It's very unscientific and, and informal. And I don't, I don't know if that's the right way to do it or not, but that's how I've always done it anyway. So Some of us believe it's more legitimate because the S meters yeah. are all different. Some are stingy. Right. Some are actually accurate. 
Uh, I can tell you right now, I know the FTDX 5000, it's accurate at S1, then it starts getting stingy until you get to S5, and after S5, it gets better. Yeah. And then when you get to S9 and above, it's only off by one dB. Mm. So for example, if somebody is an S9 on my FTDX 5000, I know they're actually S9 plus one dB. Mm. So they, they're not linear, you know? They, they, yeah, so yeah. You, you, and it's probably going to depend on the gain of your antenna also. I mean, you know. Well, that certainly contributes to the noise figure. So like you said, okay. you know, if I've got an S5 no or S7 noise level and somebody's right. an S9, I'm still going to hear some grind in there. Yeah. But yeah. I might switch to a different antenna. That I have that here. Mm -hmm. My doublet has got tremendous gain, but it also, with all that gain, it drags in more noise. Right. But right. I can exactly. switch over to exactly. an antenna that won't have the gain of the doublet and actually hear somebody better. Well, for example, mm -hmm. the the reasoning behind people that have beverage antennas, mm -hmm. they're not mm -hmm. looking for an S meter reading. <laughs> they're just mm -hmm. wanting to hear that station that nobody else can. <laughs> right. True. And, yeah, and, and, true. and, you know, in a case, uh, case in point, when I'm working CW with all the filters engaged, the filters not the S meter reading down anyway. Yes. Cause the S meter is driven from the automatic gain control mm -hmm. circuit. And so all this filtering you're doing upstream is, is cutting the, the voltage level at, at the end of that. And so it's going to not drive the S meters high. But I can have somebody filtered in CW to the point where they're not even wiggling my S meter and I can legitimately call it a 599 mm -hmm. because I'm hearing no noise. I'm hearing pure signal and great tone. Mm -hmm. And so you got to get past looking at S meters on any of these radios. I mean, mm -hmm. I haven't, I haven't gone through the 10 and tried to analyze its S meter accuracy, mm -hmm. but I, okay. I would suspect that, you know, it, it's every radio is a little bit different. So you're, right. I think you're totally legitimate in giving somebody a signal report based upon how they sound to you. Going back to the original intent of an S meter, which was to read a change in, in volume, a change in audio level. Right, right, right. Okay. So good. All right. What do you want to start with? Receive? Uh, well, yeah, let's start with re receive. And I'm, I'm going to put it back to where I found it. And uh, uh, you're just like me, man. That's the way I like to show yeah. up. And with that radio, by the way, you, you've probably noticed this by now. In the menu system, if it's in yellow, it's a default. And then on things like the filters, they'll uh, like the filter width at the top right, that ring, that'll mean that'll go gray when it's at a default. But the, and the default is 3000 hertz. Gotcha. And okay. uh, one other thing. They light up those little orange LEDs behind the behind uh, next to those knobs, and yeah. also sometimes inside the buttons, to yes. let you know that that is uh, not on default. Right. So okay. I'll, I'll show you that when you're ready. Okay. Let's see. I think I'm gonna do it instead of having us both on there. I think I'm gonna do it like that. That should be a little bit better. Oh, that's for you. man, that's perfect. Okay. All right. So let's do that instead. Um, okay. So um, that should be. That should be pretty close to, to default right there. I didn't change much else. Well, even if even if you did, it's okay. We can point it out as we go because it's obvious when when it turns yellow, you're on a default. In, right. In, okay. in the menu part. In the menu part. So let me let me uh, tell you, show you what I mean about that. Okay. Top right ring up to the top right at two o'clock. That where you got shift and width. Yes. Rotate the width counterclockwise. It's the uh, outside one. Yeah, the ring counterclockwise. Yeah. Now you'll notice as soon as you got off of three thousand, the color change. Right. Yeah. D right here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, and now move your finger a minute and look up there, and you'll see an orange LED lit up. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Over there on so, the side. And that, so that's great. I think that's phenomenal. That is letting you know at a at a quick glance that oh, by the way, you might want to know you are operating that's now it. off of a default. You're right not here. on the yeah. default right now. So gotcha. if you rotate that back to 3000, that light will go out. And yeah. the same thing happens with the shift. If you turn the shift knob left or right right now, you'll see an orange light come on. Yeah. So that's really yeah. cool. I wasn't yeah. expecting to see that on the radio, but uh, yeah. that's a nice feature. So yeah. now in that, okay. at that level, it's different. It's got the little visual indicators, the LEDs, things like that to let you know that you're not on the uh, default plus uh, the color change in the display. When we get into the actual menu settings, those are the defaults will be yellow. So it's really cool that they did that. You know, you know, in the old days, you'd have to grab the manual out if you messed it up and go, "What? What?" The manuals and Yesus will tell you what the default settings are. Right. 
Well, now they got smart about it. And so you don't have to grab your manual. You just know that if the, if the value is in yellow, that is a default. Good. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. You want to work on uh, receive audio tapering? Yes. That's usually the first thing I like to do to one. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, you got your, we're on a sideband station. So let's go press the yeah. function button in. It acts as a multi knob. The function, that function knob is a button as well. Yes. And by the way, just in case I forget, before we go here, let me do one other thing because I'm liable to forget this later. Uh, just, just hit the back. Yeah. Now go back up there and adjust the width and the shift and don't, don't, I don't care where you put them, just move them where the orange light comes on. Okay. Do both of them. There you go. Now long press the shift knob, just press it in straight and hold it. It'll, that's what will revert back to defaults. Oh, so no. Oh, so I don't have to turn it back. You don't have it's, to it's, turn the knob. I got you. I and, gotcha. and by the way, one of my viewers who owns one of these radios um, told me about that. His name is Todd. Really cool. So I really want to thank nice. Todd for that. Okay. Um, so, you know, you can always learn a little something. I don't care how smart sure. you think you are, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. Especially yeah. since he's had a lot more time with the radio than I have. I've had one for yeah. about five days now. Okay. okay, so now, yeah, press the function button in. So that's what reminded me that some of these buttons on Yesus, you pre they're, they're not just knobs, they're also buttons. Now, down in the bottom left, you'll see where it says radio setting. Mm -hmm. Press that. And uh, then look for SSB audio. Um, SS, uh, mode I'm SSB. Sorry, is mode, SS, yeah. mode SSB. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right, that's, that's then, the default one. And then tap that arrow because it doesn't look like you're all the way at the top. So tap that arrow so it moves all the way back to the top. There we go. There we go. Okay, so if you're using, this is something I just discovered after I hooked up this external speaker to this radio. And I should mention the SP30 speaker perfectly matches this radio in profile and every which way. Okay. Um, and so, um, in fact, if you want before the end of the video, I guess I could show you what it looks like sitting next to it. But that speaker does add more bottom end to the audio. Uh -huh. So what I discovered when I set it up without the external speaker is I had to boost the low end because you're only running off that little speaker inside. And, but let me go ahead and give you the numbers I would recommend just right now out of the chute. On the very top one, just tap it. Yep. The very top uh, where it says zero up there. Uh, AF treble game. AF treble game, audio frequency treble. Now rotate the function knob. You got to do it quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? fine. All right. Where are we put going? It, and put it on two and then okay. just press it in or yeah. let it time out. Yeah, now, it, it, it by the way, out. though, let me show you another way in case it does time out. As long as you're still on, have that one selected, press the function button again, and it'll actually allow you to adjust it again. Gotcha. So you okay. can either tap it on the screen, or there's a lot of or, features on the radio or, that or are like that. Go yeah, either, either way. Gotcha. or. There are numbers of, of there are a number of features on there on the radio. You know, setting frequency. You can tap the screen, or you can do it with a VFO, things like that. There's several functions that are duplicated, so you can do touch screen or a knob. Okay, now for the mids, let's just leave that alone. So it'll be yellow. Okay. And the AF middle tone gain. And then the bass gain, since you don't have an external speaker hooked up, let's see how it'll sound at a setting of maybe seven or eight. Try try eight for the third one. Okay. Okay, and then you can either let it time out or, yeah, there you go. Now, Hit the back button. And now, which one's the back button? Oh, just down here at the bottom? Yeah. Yep. Well, there's and one other thing we're going to go in there and do, but before we do that, I want you to listen to the audio and see how it sounds. Okay. You've got somebody on the air, right? Yes. So, you know, you, uh, you might okay. have to take that Lowe's thing and... Um, and, and, you know, turn it up and down while you're listening to somebody to decide if it's enough lows or not. I think that's good. That's I think that sounds good to me. Okay. So now let's go back into that menu and let me show you something else. And we, in the audio world, we call it shelving. They don't call it that. They call it low cut and high cut. Right. And so, uh, so scroll down with the arrow until you see low cut, L cut frequency. Yep. Right there. All right. 
So I'll cut and high cut. So out of the box, it's going to have a, a set at 100 for the low cut with a 6 dB slope. And then out of the box, the high cut is going to be uh, at the default of 3,000 hertz. So in other words, they're giving yeah, you... Yeah, the these these, we changed these the other day. So they're yeah, white okay, instead yeah. of yellow. Yeah, there you so go. that's there, where... That's, there you yeah. go. That's the default. Okay. That's the default right there. Okay. So out of the box they're giving you a wide range to listen to 2,900 Hertz of bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So, and that's fine if you like the way that sounds, but I can, I, what the, where the shelving can come in handy, they call low cut, high cut, um, is that we can decide, well, you know, uh, noise is a high frequency and I, to my ear, people sound pretty good when I'm just even listening to 2,400 wide. Yeah. Well, if you're happy with a 2,400 width, there's no reason in, in uh, listening at 3,000. So you can go in here and you can tailor that a little bit. So, for example, um, let's do the high cut first. And let's okay. drop that from 3,000 down to 2,400 just for, just for grins. We'll do, we'll do something else too, but I want to show you a little trick here. So what I'm saying there is, is at, at, after 2,400 hertz, which... The human voice is going to be between about 300 and 3,000. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that, you know, after 2,400 hertz, I'm not here. I'm not interested in hearing every little hiss in somebody's voice. You know, we call, uh, we call symbolists, mm -hmm. but so I'm saying at 2,400 hertz, I want you to start rolling it off. In other words, what I'm doing now is besides the fact that I've got an IF bandwidth over there, the band, the width knob mm -hmm. that can narrow my, um, my spectrum. In, in, in the IF level, I'm also able to do it in the audio frequency level. They work, they can work parallel, they work together. So okay. the, the six dB per octave, what that means is, is if I'm starting to roll off at 2400 Hertz with six dB per octave of cut of slope, mm -hmm. that means at one octave above that, which is gonna be 4,800 Hertz, an octave is double or half. Mm -hmm. So at 4,800 hertz, the amount of high frequencies I'm hearing have dropped by six decibels. Okay. So think of it this way. If I drop it to 2,400, I'm not going to not, it's not that I'm not going to hear 2,800 or 3,000. It's mm -hmm. going to be, but it's going to be minima, minimized somewhat, which is going to help, uh, help with the noise floor. Okay. So you're helping the noise floor in the audio spectrum after you've even done anything over there with the width knob and you know for the uh, dsp mm -hmm. so now another way to do that if, if you don't like the way that sounds and honestly this just comes down to personal preference to be honest with you and okay. i gotta confess that what i'm about to show you i actually sometimes switch back and forth <laughs> i don't okay. know bore, boredom but another, <laughs> another approach to that is but well before we change the frequency i just want to let you know though if you were to move that to 18 decibels which is the option for cut that's the other option. Leave it this on 20, one, the low cut or the high cut, but change the uh, decibels down below the 2400. Change that to 18. And what you're doing there now, you're saying that after 2400 hertz, at by the time it gets to 4800 hertz, I want to have cut the highs by 18 decibels. Mm. And the way I best describe that is just to think of it as more of a brick wall type of a filter, you know, gotcha. it's called the filter skirt. So you're sloping it off much more aggressively. Mm -hmm. So now that, if you have the, have it set on 2400 with an 18 decibel cut, some people may not like that because that is going to take a little bit of that high end out of somebody's voice that you're listening to. Mm -hmm. It may be pleasant to you though. It depends on your own ear. So another option that you might consider is this. Uh, leave it on 18 decibels now, but change the frequency to two, to 2800. 2800. 2800. So a lot of the radios in the past would come with a receive filter that was 2.8 kilohertz or 2800 hertz. That mm -hmm. was a real common bandwidth for us to listen on. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have this ladies and gentlemen agreement even on sideband that we don't exceed three kilohertz of transmit bandwidth anyway. Right. Now, some people are breaking that rule, but... <laughs> but you know, that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. So really, if I'm listening at 2.8 kilohertz wide and I'm knocking the octave down by 18 decibels, mm -hmm. again, more of a brick wall filter, 
Um, you, I might like that better. I'm still able to hear 2.8 kilohertz full out, but after that, it's gonna start sloping, but it's gonna slope faster down by the time it gets to uh, 2,800 twice, so 5,600, it'll be an 18 decibel drop. So it's a very much, a very much more of a um, aggressive drop in those higher frequencies. And okay. honestly, I think everybody just has to tinker with that until their own liking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you yourself can, you know, you can try that and see w which way sounds best to you. But the, the point I wanted to make, though, is, is you're also, by doing these things, you're helping your receiver, uh, again, another step, another opportunity to help your receiver minimize noise. Okay. So that's, uh, again, in the audio industry, we call that shelving, but in these radios, they call it high cut and low cut, which is really what it is. Okay. And you get the two choices. So just remember this, 6 dB, I always think of it this way, 6 dB is a gentle slope after that frequency of roll-off, it's also called roll-off, mm -hmm. um, frequency roll-off, or 18 dB is aggressive. So gentle or aggressive is the difference between 6 dB, gentle, 18 dB, aggressive. Now let's go up there and do the low side. It's set on 100 hertz right now. Right. So um, some... Some radios, uh, as a matter of fact, again, this kind of goes goes back to what kind of a speaker do you have? If yeah. you've got a speaker that's producing a lot of lows, you might want to run that to 200. Okay. Or even, uh, I mean, I'll, be, I'll tell you on my 5,000, I have it set to 150. And that's with the 5,000's external speakers. But let's remember that the human voice occupies around 300 hertz to 3,000 hertz. So how much below 300 hertz do you even need to hear, right? Right. And uh, now that is unless you're some kind of a, a, a record-breaking bass singer in a in a quartet. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, you know, but you know, you know, you've heard people on the air that have their audio so wide that they almost sound like a bullfrog. Right. I sometimes catch myself having to go in here just because of a cue saw I'm having and temporarily run that up to three or four hundred just to try to knock their low end down or. I narrow it with my filter width over there on the right that like we did earlier. Yeah. So I would recommend if you're going to use this radio with the external speaker that's available for it, because I, I just hooked one up and I found out it produces a lot of low end. So okay. I, and that's not a bad thing. I'm just saying it's very full sounding audio. Sure. Then I would recommend running this at maybe 200 hertz. So let's just pretend you have the external speaker. Okay. And then gently slope it off. So leave that at 6 dB. Okay. Yeah, right now, there. if you find that you still feel like the lows are still too much, mm -hmm. either change it to an 18 dB cut. Mm -hmm. But what that's going to mean is since it's set on 200, at 100 hertz, the low, in, low frequencies in the audio will have been cut by 18 decibels. Okay. Or maybe bump it up to 300 hertz and then leave it on six decibels per octave. So when it gets down to 150 hertz, it will have dropped by six decibels. Again, it's gentle versus aggressive in right. that. And, and really there is no formula other than to say what sounds good to you. But what we're gonna do in this video is at least um, equip people with the knowledge of knowing what those controls do. And then they can go in there and tweak them to their, their own liking. Gotcha. Okay. But in my experience with the radio, to my ear, uh, I just felt like that, you know, 150 hertz with a 60, 150 to 200 with a 6 dB slope was a good sound. Okay. And uh, yeah, with the internal, with the internal speaker. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we've got. I'm going right now. So uh, there you go. That's what I would do to receive audio. Now I should mention that, th that these same opportunities are available for the other modes that this radio has believe it or not right yeah you see am and fm there so okay yeah as a matter of fact uh, uh, for a bonus let's back out and let me show you uh the one for cw okay it's it's on its own menu there you go yep mm -hmm. intuitive isn't it yeah well, so, that's right next to it so yeah yeah they they made them next door neighbors I, I i will tell you there is something there is something in in here that i did find a little bit odd in the menu but uh we won't go there just yet i just so you go to uh, CW, and then again, you're going to look for those uh, shelving opportunities, which yep. are, um, well, and also too, you got the AF gain, treble, and all that. I set that the same, um, you know, three, two. Actually, I didn't do the lows all the way. I did. I left the. Um, if you press the arrow and go, no, no, not those. Go all the way up. I was just setting them back to default. That's okay, fine. so now we're on the C CW setting menu. 
Okay. And um, they have trouble gain. Again, uh, maybe three. Um, three. Uh, you remember, you're only listening to a CW tone here, and it's yeah. going to be down around the 600 hertz range. Uh, by the way, the default in this radio is a 700 hertz CW tone, and that grates on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like uh, for rag chew, I like 550 and for chasing DX, I like 600 because 600 does cut through uh, noise floor really well. Okay. okay. And so then uh, for the mids, just leave, uh, put those on two, put those on two. This is what I found worked good with this radio. Mid and bass? Uh, mid, put the bass on three. Two and three. Yeah. Oops. So we should have three, two, three. These are just settings that my gotcha. ear likes. So again, gotcha. yeah, different you people are going to want to adjust that their own, to their own sure. liking. Now sure. use the arrows and let's go down and look for the shelving, which is going to be the low cut, high cut. Yeah, that's what we had changed before. So I set those back to default now. Excellent. That's where we're at right now is All right. 250 low with 18 dB drop off and uh, 1200 high with 18 dB drop off. Right. So that is, those are the factory defaults. And I got to be honest with you, I do a little bit here because I want to help minimize the noise on CW as well. And the, not to mention bandwidth. See, the yeah. great thing about CW, those who do CW know this, you can have another cue. So if, you're, if your receiver is tight enough, selective enough, that RMDR rating, mm -hmm. somebody else can be carrying on a CW conversation 200 hertz away from yours. Mm. And you won't even know it. Well, that's huge when you work in a contest, but think sure. about it. Why do we even contest? We're practicing for what if we had a state of emergency and cell towers go down, which a lot of people don't realize the cell towers are programmed in, in a national emergency to only allow people who are emergency personnel to use the cell tower. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when something like that happens, we assume the cell tower has gone down. No, we're just not allowed to use it right now. So, uh -huh. and we're seeing a, we're seeing a huge, um, um, influx now of people interested in ham radio uh, because of, of the, you know, I mean, let's just call it what it is, the prepping, you know. Right, yeah. A lot of, sure. lot of the preppers. And so um, if we did have an emergency, the CW bands are going to be easier to be able to get messages through on because we don't have to have 3,000 hertz of bandwidth. Now, to be fair, I just had this encounter a few minutes ago with the other with the FTDX10 uh, in the 5,000 shooting another video I just did. I had QR mm -hmm. Mary two kilohertz away. Mm. I narrowed down that width to one to 1500. And, and, and then I used the shift because if the QR Mary is a high metallic sound, you want to shift counterclockwise. If it's a low honking sound, you want to shift positive with those two tools right there. You can combat QR Mary. It's That's possible right. that in crowded band conditions with QR Mary, we could operate sideband down to one one point five and still be okay. In fact, I've operated down to one point two, but with uh -huh. CW, man, we can get down to another QSO being two hundred hertz away from us, and we're just fine. So mm. I want to help. Okay. We one of the things we do with CW is we'll use that width knob up there, and we we'll go down as narrow as one hundred or even fifty hertz. Okay, uh, the one on the top right? The top right. The same one that worked a while ago with sideband. When you're in CW mode, it'll work yeah. with CW. Yeah, right there. And it'll okay. go all the way down to 50. Yeah. Now, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you this. When I'm working what I call a ghost station, or as one of my friends says, um, Ariel, who makes the uh, NY4G EFHW antennas, he calls them imaginary. Or He said, Doug, those stations are barely above imaginary. <laughs> when I'm working those kind of stations, I will run it all the way down to 50 and put headphones on. And the reason is these, the F CW filters, and everybody will know what I'm talking about when I say this, that, that operates CW. There's an inherent uh, amount of ringing that goes on. It's, it's really called filter ripple. Yeah. And what it is, it's the amount of signal you're pushing through that CW roofing filter. And that's one of the reasons, again, I always say start tack, tack the noise from the front end, try to minimize it there but it'll get that ringing effect. Well, even if you do everything right, you may still have a little residual ringing effect and narrowing mm. down to 50 will help take care of that. So I'll put the headphones on, push that all the way down to 50. I'm even using digital noise reduction on CW and I've done it with the FTDX 10 today and it was a big boy. It would did a great job. And I mm. was picking out a station that literally was almost imaginary and all I heard was tone. So hmm. we can help that even more with what I'm about to show you. We're going to do the shelving again, but this time for CW. 
So okay. what I'm suggesting is, is set the frequency, the low cut frequency at 500, even though that's not a default, and then put the slope at 6 dB. So now what we're saying is, anything below 500 hertz, it's not that I won't hear it at all, but I want to start attenuating it. Mm -hmm. And how far down do I want to attenuate it? I'm going to gently slope it off so that down at 250 hertz, an octave below, it will have dropped by six decibels. Gotcha. Now, remember what is what six decibels equates to is your ear can hear the difference in six decibels. Mm -hmm. Again, back to why the S meters read the way they do. Now, some right, people prefer... Right to leave it on 250 and then go to the 18 dB cut. So they'll hear all the way down to 250 and then the, and then they just make it drop right off almost like a brick wall. I'm, I'm using the radio right now with it set on 500 with a gentle slope of 6 dB and I'm, it's, it's a boss on CW right now. In mm. fact, it's breaking my heart because it's hanging right with my 5,000. <laughs> um, so, so now the, the high cut frequency if you're like me and you like a 600 hertz CW tone, you don't need to hear 700. And the default is 1200. I certainly don't need to have my audio stage trying to amplify 1200 hertz when I don't really even want to hear that. So I'm recommending you lower that down to 700 hertz. Now, if you're going to use the radio out of the way it is out of the box with a 700 hertz tone, if you're one of those people who prefer 700 hertz tone, then put that on 800 hertz, okay? But mm -hmm. I like 600, so therefore I drop it to 700, which, by the way, is the lowest it'll go. Oh, okay. But also uh, leave that on 18 decibels per octave. So what I'm saying there is, I really want a brick wall. I'm saying at 700 hertz, I don't, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear anything above 700 hertz. So just cut it off as quick as you can. And 18 dB is the maximum that it can do. To so we're we're aggressively sloping that off. So right. those settings there, in combination with the audio settings, in combination with that. DSP width knob up there in the top right, but uh, uh, off from the VFO, right will get yeah that that will put this radio on steroids on CW. It, I mean I've just been hmm. I've been blown away by the receiver in that little radio, okay. and and you know so that's a good reason why Sherwood is giving it number three place in the world right now. It's just amazing that a radio in this price range can yeah. do that. Yeah. So okay. now if you hit the back button and get all back, oh, you can get all the way back out of that. So that ought to give somebody a good, uh, don't, before you go any further though, stay right yep. there for a second. Cause I want to show you the one little quirky thing I found in the menu and it applies to CW as well. But, um, you know, everybody's going to need to maybe tailor everything. We just showed them to their own liking. But the, to me, I find these uh, as good starting points. It's like, I've had many people on my channel say, Hey, would you give me what your, uh, your EQ settings are for your microphone? Well, I mean, hand mic, desk mic, high LPR 781, you know, it's all different for different mics, but also if I did give them, and I have, I've given people my settings, but their voice is going to be different than mine. So my settings are just going to give you a good starting point and then you tweak from there. And the same can be true of these settings we just went through. I want to show you something I found to be a little quirky. The next button over to the right. Operation setting. Uh, operation setting. And uh, go back, go to the top and you're going to see uh, noise blanker width and things like that. But I, what yeah. I want you to do, because that's general, uh, press RxDSP. Yep. Okay. The APF, that's the audio peak filter. Now, I believe you have those in, in flex radios. I've been told you do. I've not had the pleasure of playing with a flex radio, but um, I mean, to be honest with you, I have it ham fest, but I'm yeah. told that it does have this feature audio peak filter. So what audio peak filter does for you on CW now, it's a CW tool, Okay. is after you've done all of that other work that we just did. So you've got the audio spectrum set, you've got your shelving, your, you know, your high cut, your low cut, you're going to use the bandwidth down to maybe 50 or 100. Some people prefer 100. Like I said, it's, it's when I'm working those almost imaginary stations that I find 50 helps. You, you just about have to wear headphones. Okay. And But here's one other thing that can help. The audio peak filter will lock in on whatever your side tone is set to. So in my case, 600 Hertz, mm -hmm. and it'll boost that frequency. And okay. it's very tight, or oh, it can be very tight. That's what we're about to set. You see right now, the default 
is going to be set to mid or medium. Medium, yeah. And you can widen it too. Go to narrow. I never leave mine on, on, on medium. Okay. Now, as a point of reference, it's interesting to me, the FTDX 5000 has one more narrow than that, and it's called S narrow or super narrow, and I do mm. take advantage of that from time to time. But I'm going to show your, your viewers how you can make this radio match the 5000 by a little trick I use, but we'll get to that in a minute. Narrowing that down means that it's going to be so tight now that somebody could be 50 hertz away, and I'm probably not going to hear them unless they're really slamming strong. Okay. So it, because it's now attacked, we've already taken care of it in the RF spectrum, and we've taken care of it in AIF. And, and, and you know, by the way, everybody probably knows this by now. This radio and the 101 series are hybrids, so they do have a super heterodyne front end for all the advantages that that offers from a standpoint of, of uh, noise abatement as well as selectivity. And then they go to the SDR chip and then later to the DSP. So we've, uh, we've got all those advantages working for us. And then here in the last stage in the, in the DSP portion, we're now going to even narrow it even more in the audio spectrum to where we're saying, uh, and, 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 I, and let me point out where that control is is over on the bottom right. You'll see where it says notch right here. and contour slash APF. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So notch is, uh, you know, your, your notch up there. There's a, that's the knob in the middle. There you go. And when you turn it, it'll all of a sudden, you know, it'll light that up. Now go ahead and turn right. it off for now because we're, well, we are going to get to that in a minute. Now, now to turn off, once you rotate it, I know that's not intuitive. You have yeah. to actually press the button to disable it. Press the little button up there that says notch. Oh, this right here. Yeah, that see when you turn yeah, that knob, it that turned LED the light on. came on. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Right, I saw that. Now okay. the ring part of that knob is contour or APF. Now it's interesting. Some radios, some Yesu radios, don't allow you to use contour with with uh, CW. This radio will actually allow you to use contour with both CW and sideband. Contour is a great help with um, with sideband though, mm -hmm. and um, yes but APF is exclusively for CW. So what I like to do is I like to set that to narrow because I want it, I want that APF to be that last opportunity for me to push everybody else left and right on a, a side and hear, so I can hear that five watt CW signal that's 2,100 miles away. Okay. And, and now, so let me, mm -hmm. let me say for the sake of those who might be wondering, well, yeah, but what if, I can't, I, what if I'm looking for somebody to hear, you know, I, I haven't even found a station yet. You're probably not going to want to have it at 50 Hertz. You're not going to want it tight. So tight yet, maybe widen it back out to 300 Hertz with that, with that, uh, the filter, the width button up there on the, um, the control, the width knob. Yeah, this, this one here. So once you, yeah. and then what, yeah, that one. And once you find somebody, then, uh, then you can narrow down, then you can narrow down. And by the way, the, the S meter right below it, there's a little indicator, a little white thing that moves back and forth for CW that when you get, when you get centered on them, it will be in the middle. Yeah. This if right we were in CW mode, I'd show you that, but, um, yeah. it will be when they're centered up, they'll, it'll be in the middle. And what that's doing is that's letting you know that you have arrived at a frequency because they could be a little off frequency with their CW transmitter. It will let you know mm -hmm. that you have arrived at a frequency that will produce the 600 hertz side tone that you want. Then you can narrow that down to 50 and you'll absolutely hear them. But it is true. People would say, yeah, I mean, if you're at 50 hertz width, you won't be able to hear anybody else. You might accidentally even scroll past somebody, you know, because it's so narrow. So, yeah, widen it out temporarily till you find a signal. And then when you want to lock in on that station, then narrow back down to uh, 50. So, uh, so if you want to go back into that, I'll, uh, what I'll tell you, I, the reason I thought it was quirky where it was located, if you click back in there, is that the APF is associated with CW, and yet they put it over here uh, with contour. Ah, now, okay. I, I'm, I'm sure the reasoning is, is because of the fact that contour and APF share the same location on the radio down there in the bottom right. You know, those what we call ganged pots. Yes, down so the, yeah, yeah. The two knobs there. are together, yeah. So that may be mm -hmm. the reasoning. They're just saying, okay, for those two, we're going to put them together. But just mm -hmm. know that the uh, the APF width is related to um, to the uh, contour. Now, the next gotcha. one down, contour level, 
and contour yep. width. I actually like the Yesu defaults there. Okay. Um, what contour is for, and this is unique. I, I, I have heard there's another brand of radio that has it, but I don't want to say for sure because I haven't seen it myself. It's a rumor at this point. Mm. But what contour is, is a, the ability, as you can see, it's negative 15 dB. So it's actually cutting something. It's cutting a range of frequencies in the audio spectrum if you turn it on and then how much of a cut it's doing is set by the next not the next control down the contour width and that has can be set from 1 to 11 okay. so when we get back out to the other screen I'll show you what all that means but I'm going to recommend you leave that where it is okay and then for the IF notch put that on narrow notch filters are notorious for uh, you know if they're wide then they are they're going to change the way people sound on the other end. So you don't really need your notch filter to be wide unless you're trying to notch out some something like, um, you know, a, a plasma TV noise from a, mm. a noisy, a noisy wall ward or an LED bulb, things like that that cause noise these days. But like for heterodyne, for just a tuner upper, um, you don't need wide. And, and, and so narrow is uh, what I prefer because you almost, you, you can barely tell that you have the notch turned on with narrow. Okay. So you're literally going to focus on only the offending heterodyne that you want to knock out. So those okay. are the settings I would recommend. Now, okay. if you want to hit the back button and let's get back out to where we're hearing some sideband and I'll, and we'll put that contour to action just so people can understand it a little more. Okay. So um, if I, is anybody talking there? Not at the moment. Well, there was somebody you know, on this ago. screen, uh, I, I see that you've got it on um, on Waterfall, uh, the non-3D, which is cool. Uh, but, you know, this radio, just like the 7300, you can tap one of those spikes that you see poking up there, and it'll it'll get you close to that signal. Right. And yeah. then you can yeah. fine-tune it. So if you, yeah, you like want to see if you can find somebody that's talking. Oh, excellent. Excellent. I do have some semi-modern stuff. I've got uh, and uh, and uh, by the way, uh, noting noting that he's coming in best at, at um, fourteen one seventy eight dot oh thirty. Yep. He may be a little off frequency because this radio has a TCXO standard. Yep. And um, so and it's stable to zero point five parts per million. Okay. Now I will I will say. The FTDX 101s have it at 0.1 parts per million, so they're a little more stable even than this radio. Okay. And the FTDX 5000 has an oven control crystal oscillator that's stable at 0 0.5 parts per million. Wow. Now, if you do the math on that, you're going to go, wow, that's even 10 times more stable than the FTDX 10. True, but I got to tell you, for all practical purposes, a TCXO at 0.5 is quite good. Yeah. Okay. But chances are, if you're not, if you're hearing somebody and they sound a little off frequency, it may be them. They may, maybe they're operating on an older radio or radio that doesn't have a TCXO. Okay. All right. So let's play with contour. Uh, go down there to the uh, where you see APF contour slash APF and engage that. It's a button right above the uh, ring, the knob. Yeah, I got it. I got it. It's on. Now, you'll see a little scoop. Turn it off for a second. Look up there in the spectrum, right below frequency. You see your yeah, spectrum. Yeah, so right, right here. Right there. Yeah, you see that it little. Turns scoop. this on. There you go. Yep. Now I see it. If we were to go into the menu and set that to negative twenty-five, the depth mm -hmm. of that little notch there would go down more. If we gotcha. were to set it to eleven instead of ten, it would widen a little bit. Or if we dropped it down to three, it would narrow a little bit. Okay. Now, what that is, uh, if you turn your volume up and sweep that contour knob a little bit, which is going to be the ring at the bottom right. Is he not? T he's not talking right now. Is he? Yeah, he is. Oh, there we go. Now, I'll, I'll give you my um, rule of thumb with that. I find that contour to be most effective at somewhere between 1,700 and 2,200 hertz. He stopped talking as soon as you said he's not talking right now. <laughs> Let me go up here. This guy's talking. Isn't that the way it is when you're shooting these videos? Right. Here we go. 
Self-sustained one. There we go. Uh, okay, so rotate the contour and put it at 2200 just for grins right now. So that's that's the crazy. Now you're gonna notice it's cutting the highs. Yes. All right. Now go down to 1700 and you're gonna hear a little more highs come back in. Yes. Okay. So uh, you know I like to call that luster. You know. Um, right. So here's the deal. What contour is not intended for. It is not intended to give you a high fidelity. Right. Okay. It's another tool in your toolbox to fight noise. So if I, I'm chasing that rare DX on the Pitcairn Islands mm -hmm. and he's right down in the weeds, you know, he's right in my noise floor and I can barely pull out my signal report. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's always 5.9, right? <laughs> right. But, <laughs> but, you know, let's say it's a legit thing. You're truly, really trying to get, you know, the, the maybe you don't know the call sign on the other station. You're missing one letter. That'd be a great example. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that contour knob, and here, here, here's why I'm focusing on the range of 1700 to 2200. Uh -huh. Like we said before, the, the human voice is going to fall mostly between 300 and 3000 hertz. The intelligi intelligibility, easy for me to say, the intelligibility range of that is going to be up in that 2000 hertz plus or minus range. Okay. Now that will also depend on the voice of the other person if they've got a higher pitch voice or a lower pitch voice, right? Sure, sure. So that's why we can't say there's a there's a there's one size fits all. There's one place to put contour. But what I the way I describe contour is, I want to put that little notch that we see on the screen, right next to where their voice is the most intelligible. Right. That. Mm -hmm. You want to slide that up and down the spectrum until and here here's the straight skinny on it the easy way to remember this rotate it until you can hear the other station good okay but no. in effect what you're doing is you're getting close to where their voice is the most intelligible mm -hmm. and you're knocking the noise floor down right next to it okay so i'll describe that to people as sneak up on them so start you know that thing may come up different radios have the the contour comes up at different defaults on one radio mm -hmm. i've got i think it's 350. I think on this one, as I recall, it might have been default at 1500. Mm. So, but what you're going to do is you're going to sneak that contour control up to where mm -hmm. you're getting, you're knocking the noise down right next to where they sound the best. And what I have found that to be, depending on the person's voice, mm -hmm. it usually falls somewhere between 1700 and 2200 hertz. I think maybe one time I wound up even at 2300 hertz, but no more. Okay. Now, I should say, in all fairness, you're probably going to have viewers like I have, that'll come up and say, why did you cut with the contour? Why not boost? You can, we can go back into that menu and instead mm. of a 15 dB cut, we can actually boost it, say 10 dB, for example. Okay. And then that little notch you see there becomes a hump. And, ah. and the rule and the school of thought there is, well, wait a minute. If you say that what I'm doing is I'm getting up close to where their voice is intelligible and knocking the noise floor down next to it. What if I do the opposite? What if I set it to where I'm going to boost and then I find where their voice is the most intelligible and I, and I boost their voice. Mm -hmm. That's okay. But what I have found my own personal feeling about it, my own personal experience is it also drags more noise up, mm. you know, yeah. because the noise is in yeah. that area too. And so I'm not going for high fidelity there. I'm going mm -hmm. for getting that last letter in his call sign. So I prefer to knock the noise down and just leave their, their voice there, even though it will darken up the way they sound a little bit. Okay. So that's that's the beauty of a contour control. In fact, when my friend Joel and I first uh, got first radio we saw with, that had that on there, we were just blown away. You know, mm -hmm. the effectiveness that uh, the effectiveness of that when you are down to that. Now I will tell you, I usually use the contour control in in conjunction with digital uh, digital noise reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, the digital noise reduction and the contour together can be a, you know a lethal weapon combined, but sometimes you only need one or the other. Okay. And again, on this radio, I have discovered that the DNR seems to have gone through a, a, a major improvement mm -hmm. and uh, settings of, of even one are good, but even two or three, you don't need much more than that, except on CW. I may actually run it to 10 or even 15 for CW, the digital noise reduction. Mm -hmm. And so okay. sometimes you'll use digital noise reduction to attack the noise and then the contour puts the icing on the cake, as it were. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I love how this radio shows you a visual indication of everything you're doing right there in that 
audio in the audio spectrum and uh, you know mm -hmm. gives you a good visual. One other thing about contour, like I said, it can be used with CW. Some radios don't give you that choice. Uh, okay. The 5000 does and the 10 does for sure. And so uh, what you'll find that it can do for you on CW, I, I still prefer APF, okay? Mm -hmm. But you can run that down to about 100 to 200 hertz, 300 max, and you're knocking some of that low end roar that below the CW signal. But remember, we set it up right a while ago in the audio chain where we told it to knock down 500 hertz and below anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. uh, but you could, again, icing on the cake, you could put the contour down around 300 and if there's anything left over down there, plus or minus 300, just adjust it and see what works best. Then you're then that that contour control can take care of whatever's left over uh, in the CW spectrum because we're listening at 600, for example. We've we've told the the radio to low cut starting at 500 and knock it down really really uh, at a 6 dB slope. I think we decided, and then so at 250, which is half of 500. You know, it'll be knocked down by 6 dB. But if I sweep that contour control in there around 250, 300, 350, mm -hmm. I'm helping even more to knock that noise floor out from under the CW signal that I'm trying to pull out. Okay. So wonderful feature there in the contour. Good. All right. So we've gone through a, a lot that has to do with the receiver. I guess, mm -hmm. you know, at some point in a future video, if you want to, we can go into transmit. I've already okay. uh, got together with my friend Joel and he got on the other, on a radio, on his radio. And we went through and found the optimum settings for my voice, which mm. would be a good starting point for someone else. Sure. For setting the radio up to work with a hand mic. And, okay. uh, and I now have the adapter cable. So I'll be able to go through the, and do the same thing with the PR781. Oh, okay, yeah, good. Hand mic, good. The hand mic's cute, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, it's different. Uh, the contour of it's different looking. Yeah, they made it so, completely different than they have yeah. their, their MH31s. Right. Um, but but you know, and it's got this um, it's got this modular plug on it. Which yeah. Is a little different thing for Yesu, but for example, the MD100 desk mic from Yesu, the cable for it can be reversed, mm -hmm. so it can either work with a Yesu rig that has the eight pin, or it can work with one that's modular. The MD100 has the cable where it just flips around. Mm, okay. Now, uh, and, and I have, in my experience with the MD100 on the 5000, um, the same, or I'm sorry, let me back up, the 891. I used my 891 as a base station for a while. Okay. Um, the settings for my hand mic for my MH31 work well with the MD100, by the way. And then the okay. MD100 has some switches on the bottom where you can further do like high emphasis, mm -hmm. low emphasis. Mm -hmm. But for a high ohm mic, it's vastly different. But high ohm mics are known mm -hmm. for having a lot of bottom end. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. generally find that with a high ohm mic, I'm going to be going to about 200 hertz and knocking it down by three or four, maybe even negative five. Okay. As a starting point. So we can detail that in a future video mm -hmm. if you'd like. But sure. these are the settings sure. that um, I have found work really well for this radio on the receive side. Okay. And noise abatement we want to just knock mm -hmm. the noise floor out from under what we're trying to listen to whether it be sideband or cw and the other modes back into the menu you can go back in there and set the other modes the same kind of audio mm -hmm. tapering for ready and what am fm and what have you okay all Perfect. right i've taken enough of your time today so i really do appreciate it for sure um, yeah absolutely man I, I this is a lot of fun i love radios good. and i love i love helping people you know, like I said, the purpose of my channel is I'm just trying to get people to not even necessarily trade in the radio they have because they may have some right. features in front of them they just haven't right. tapped into. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But when you get a radio that has features, when you get to the level of Flex and the FTDX series and the um, and the I ICOM 7610, those, that yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yes, you can even still do more. Yeah. I just don't want to see somebody go spend that kind of money and still not right. understand, you know, how to get yeah. the most out of that kind of a radio. Totally. Well, take care, my friend. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, Thanks uh, for your time, Doug. Yeah. We'll talk at you soon. Let me know if you want to shoot one on transmit. Okay.